Yo, what is up guys, Ghost here, back with some more Battlefield 5. This time I'm taking a little bit of a different approach to the plane domination videos. Normally you guys will know that I do these as a live commentary. This time around I decided I would record some gameplay and try to focus solely on the gameplay and then basically uh, commentate over the top of the gameplay. So let me know down below which style you guys prefer. So, right off the bat here, I got pretty lucky that I spawned off the ship and got somebody right in front of me with their contrails in my face, so I went and took that guy out, and now I'm taking on the second guy here over the deployment, which is uh, generally never really a good idea, fighting the enemy team over where they resupply, because then they can essentially just keep on constantly turning in circles and resupply their emergency repair over and over and you can't really do anything whilst you're in the middle of a dogfight. However, I do feel somewhat confident because you'll probably notice I am flying the AA sort of anti-air version of uh, the Corsair here. So I don't remember the exact model name of it, but it's you know, not the one with the four HMG cannons with the high explosive rounds. You basically start off with four LMGs with this thing. I've only gotten one upgrade for this thing so far, so as you can see I have six LMGs instead of the regular four, and then I also have the four rockets that you get as the default loadout. So I think this is a loadout that a lot of people, including myself, have steered clear of. A lot of people want to just go for, you know, the air-to-ground loadout that has those beefy high explosive rounds and the bombs that can kill tanks and all of the good stuff that you see people maybe like myself going on a 50 and 0 kill streak in or sometimes even 100 and 0. But as I've been using this loadout and trying to rank it up myself and get the various unlocks, I've realized just how potent it is at dealing with enemy aircraft. So let's talk about the game. So I've taken out three of the enemy planes there, which I believe is all of the planes. And uh, I was going to go for a nice little strafe down on F-Flag, but as you guys see, I got instantly destroyed there by an AA cannon. Now, what I chose to do there is dive down towards the water. A lot of people make the mistake of just staying up high in the sky and flying away. And that's going to give the enemy flat cannon a real easy shot on you. He's not going to have much of an issue just moving his crosshair a couple of centimeters either side and trailing you and following you and finishing you off. But if you drop down to the water's edge and you follow the water along the horizon, it's going to be much harder for him to actually get a line of sight on you. So that's pretty much what saved me there. Of course, I instantly flew back to my deployment, resupplied and repaired my plane back. So now I'm actually looking down there and scouting out the flat cannon guy. And as you see, he's firing there. Now, he did kind of throw off my aim a little bit there as I took some damage, and unfortunately, I only hit him for 90, so I'm going to be forced back to my deployment once again to repair. Maybe that was a little bit of unluck there, you know, I just missed one of the rockets slightly, otherwise I'm pretty sure it would have killed him. Really, with these rockets, you want to try and get as close to your target as you can before you launch them, because that's how they are the most accurate. Okay, so if you check the chat in the top left, you'll see I've basically just typed to my team there that there is a guy in the AA turret and we need help taking this guy out because at the moment he's stopping all of our strafes and if I get into a dogfight with any of the enemy planes around that area, I'm going to be dead. However, this time it seems that they've indeed taken care of the problem and he's dead, so I'm now free to engage these enemy planes. I tried to get a nice little shot on that guy on the underbelly of his plane because if you hit planes from the underside, they take way, way more damage than they do from any other angle. So if you can go for the underbelly of the plane, always try and do that. This guy kind of got me stuck in the flight ceiling a little bit there and my wingman has taken him out. So I'm going to just, you know, come back around here and reevaluate what's going on. There's another plane, so I'm going to go for him. He's heading straight back to his deployment. But yet again, I'm denied by another flat cannon. I think this one was down on D flag. Yeah, take a quick glance in the rear view camera there. And I see that it is indeed coming from the D flag. So I'm going to go ahead here and just let my teammates know what is up, where the AA cannon actually is so that they can help me take it out. A lot of the time, I think people don't really bother relying on their teammates for anything. They think they can just carry the entire game themselves. But if you do have a problem with an enemy flat cannon, or an enemy pilot or something like that, then just shout out to your teammates and more often than not, 
they will be happy to assist you, especially if you let them know that you will then be able to strafe ground targets much more and help them out in return. Okay, so I'm headed back over towards D flag here. I'm not sure if that AA cannon is gone or not, but I see two planes off there in the distance. I don't want to get close to them. And I also see this guy in the boat coming over there. So I wasn't really planning to go for that target. I was going to strafe over at D flag, but I thought, you know what? Um, since this guy could be heading over to a flag on his bill and he may be able to cap it alone as well if it's undefended, I should probably go ahead and, and take that guy out. So I didn't really need to necessarily go back home and resupply there, but you know, since I was angling around anyway, I figured I may as well go and restock my missiles. So you'll notice that every time I do a loop around, I'm sort of surveying the battlefield and checking the situation. And right here, I can see that there are three enemy planes, at least three enemy planes. I can't see any wingman up at the moment. So I honestly don't really know what I'm thinking here following this guy because if you guys know where the Japanese deployment is, it's pretty much right where we are now, uh, where we're flying over. That's where the Japanese planes are going to be going back, circling back to resupply at. It seems the other three wingmen of this guy, though, aren't really interested in helping him survive. So... It looks like I'm going to be able to finish this guy off. And there is one of my wingmen. It seems that he has distracted the other two enemy planes. So things are going okay. But honestly, in this situation, I probably wouldn't have voted for me winning this situation. Although, that being said, I am, of course, flying with the anti-air loadout. So just for comparison's sake, I have six LMGs. And all of these guys I'm flying against only have two LMGs. So I'm able to get behind them. And take them out in a fairly fast and efficient manner and if they get behind me it's going to take them basically three times as long to kill me as it will for me to kill one of them. Now do bear in mind that some of the time you can of course be going up against the same variant of aircraft as I'm flying in now so you can identify the Corsairs by them being white like this. The regular sort of ground strafing version is always a bluish colour and uh, when it comes to the Japanese Zero, you can see those green ones with the two red dots on the wings. That is the ground strafing version. So if you see one of those, that's what you know you're up against. If you see a white Zero with two red dots, that is the same as the Corsair I'm flying here. He's probably going to have six LMGs and just be aware that his air-to-air -air capabilities are pretty, pretty good. So yeah, keep that under your hat. Alright guys, so now I wanted to focus a little bit on the ground strafing capabilities of this particular plane loadout because I think a lot of people consider this plane terrible at taking out uh, targets on the ground. But you can see here I've spotted two guys. Um, I got one of them there, but it says enemy hit 180. So actually those four rockets managed to deal, almost kill both of those guys essentially. And I've just hit rank 3 in this plane loadout as well. So it just goes to show I don't really have anything except the first unlock guys and I know a lot of people in my videos comment and say how do I go about unlocking the weaponry for the planes um, it's simple you just have to play them and you may think that the cannons are really really terrible at taking out infantry because uh, the two that you get on the other plane variant are really terrible but it's only because you've got two of them but you're going to see here in a little while that if you have six of them they are pretty damn effective and I spot another tank there Go ahead, I use my rockets. I think I killed the guy that was sneaking up behind the tank. or well, not sneaking up, but more likely following him to repair him. And I think we got about a 50 vehicle hit there. So not too shabby for the starting missiles. And that's also another reason I'm going back and resupplying so frequently. This plane is pretty fast. The deployment isn't too far away here. And as you can see now by my missiles cycling, it doesn't really take too long for them to recharge. Basically, by the time you get back, um, you're in position to strafe again. Those four missiles are going to be ready and good to go. So it's nice because you can zoom in like this. You can use your four missiles. Um, then if you see some more infantry running around on the floor, you can switch to your cannons and maybe go for them all within the same strafe because the missiles, unlike the cannons and the high explosive cannons on the other plane loadout, they of course don't have any fall off you know you can shoot them from a long distance they may not be quite as accurate but you can nevertheless fire them at a long distance and then switch to your cannons and make use of those during the same strafe 
But yeah, guys, take a look at this. Okay, you're going to see how powerful these cannons can actually be. And in my opinion, they can actually in some situations be more powerful than the four HMGs. I mean, that guy just got absolutely obliterated in like a split second. And that was way less dangerous than with the HEs and having to be uh, much closer range. Um, here I see that jeep coming along the floor. I almost crashed to get that guy, but he may have had low health or something. Either way, managed to uh, pick him off with the rockets there. So here's a couple more examples of uh, using the LMGs. You know, you can't get flares in this loadout, which is a bit of a bummer. So, whoa, almost crashed into that guy. <laughs> that was close. Um, so if you don't have anybody running the other plane loadout with flares and spotting targets for you, it can be quite difficult uh, to see infantry, especially when the sand is just flying everywhere and that guy literally just disappeared in a shower of, of muck and sand. But, you know, we got him. These cannons do actually have a decent amount of splash damage, despite the fact that they don't have the high explosive rounds. They also have less drop, and I feel like they have less damage fall off as well. And all of those things mean that you are actually in less harm's way than you would normally be with the other plane loadout. So, so far, I'm enjoying this variant of the Corsair, and once I've finished unlocking everything for it, I'll definitely revisit this and make another plane domination video where I basically figure out what is the best loadout or what are the effective loadouts, because there's quite a lot to choose from. Anywho guys, that is the end of this one. Hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you thought down below. Maybe leave a like if you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time.